of all, thank you for having me. Uh, it's a pleasure to present our company and what we achieved uh, while implementing uh, integration with TIPCO and CheckMK. Uh, and that's why you should monitor your enterprise middleware systems. So first of all, a small introduction about LinksMind, our company. Uh, me and my brother, we had a dream and we've created a company 10 years ago. We started with middleware integration, that's my background, uh, with technologies like TIPCO, Kafka, MuleSoft now. Uh, we have partnerships with some of these companies. We then uh, created uh, more towers in the company in the last uh, years, one being um, IT operations, where we have DevOps uh, practices and um, where we have the, we leverage the partnership with CheckMK. And here I need to give a heads up to Ricardo Ribeiro. He was really the driver of this uh, partnership and he's well known uh, in CheckMK community. He is the one that uh, created the plugin to integrate with Teams. Uh, and then we have also the enterprise cloud where we have partnerships with SAP, AWS, and Azure. So if, feel free to visit us at linksmind.com. We are a Portuguese company with 10 years old, and we work in the major clients in Portugal, but we also have clients abroad. So for this presentation, uh, the objectives, what we want to accomplish and show, it's uh, a use case that we have implemented in one of our biggest clients in Portugal, one of the biggest uh, energy companies in Portugal, um, where we had a problem. Uh, we, we worked as a support team in the TIPCO and middleware systems, and there were some key aspects that were very hard to monitor. Uh, and we decided to use CheckMK that the client had to monitor these enterprise systems. So we'll go through explaining a little bit what monitoring and uh, what middleware is. Um, how we implement the solution, how we design it and implement it, implemented it, and then uh, how it's working in action, showing the dashboards of what we accomplish. So what is middleware? Um, middleware is an intermediary layer that allows you to communicate. In big clients, you really need a flow of information to be controlled. Uh, so you have your systems, uh, CRMs, SAP, uh, you need to communicate with all of them, so you need a layer that orchestrates the flow of messages and allow you to uh, have this information organized. Um, so, how did we implement this? TIPCO has its tool called TIPCO Hawk. When you installed uh, the solution, you have uh, some agents that are running behind that allow you to collect some metrics. Uh, real time, and you have these rule bases as well that allow you to, it's a template, that allow you to really say what you want to collect, okay? This is, uh, we had one problem that was sometimes the developers were putting more instances of TIPCO BW uh, products, so we really need to be agile on the way that we create the new monitoring solutions. So we leverage that with a script in Python that would collect using Linux uh, commands the running of the uh, applications, typical applications that were running and then thus creating uh, the scripts that allow you to monitor this solution. So typical Hawk, what I want you to understand is it's an agent that is running behind the scene collecting metrics for this typical BW solution. Another key aspect that we required to implement these was leveraging TIP EMS admin. So TIPCO uh, uses, uh, under the hood, uh, the TIPCO EMS, the TIPCO Enterprise Message Service, that is a JMS-based solution that allows you to put messages, and all the middleware so systems use this kind of service bus as the heart of the integration, where you put messages on the queues, read from the queues, uh, and uh, it, it's very important to monitor these and to see what's happening in real time. And one of the issues that you have is you have tools that allow you to see in uh, real time immediately what's happening, the number of messages on a queue, but over time you lose the context, right? So something happens during the night, you have a lot of messages, but then if you look in the morning and everything is fine, you lose context of what's happening. So 
it does not, you, you have logs, but you don't have an history of what happened uh, for the EMS system. That was something that we really want to understand because there was some issues happening and we could not figure out why. So Tibco uses this EMS uh, and has a command called tbms admin. This is more technical that allow you to, using another script, collect metrics from, t from the EMS itself. So you can run and authenticate yourself against the EMS server and collect for a file a dump where you have like the information, rate of messages in, rate of messages out, but then you can have for each one of the queue, and this was a major client that have thousands of queues, uh, the number of messages for the snapshot at that time. And this is kind of the diagram of what we achieve uh, of this solution that we were able to implement, uh, where you can see in the first layer the TIPCO layer where you have the BWs using the TIPCO hawks. We collect using the Python scripts, uh, metrics, and write it on files. The EMS using TBMS admin that is uh, referenced here by that uh, queue design, and then the BW that is reading from the queue as well. So. What we were able after to achieve was refining these files and make it readable for the Check MK agents. So this was the solution that we implemented uh, and that allow us then to showcase the dashboards that I'm about to, to present. So this is the example of two of the several things that we were able to accomplish. On the first one is the BW instance uh, collection, where the using the TIPCO hawk we were collecting for the file the metrics regarding uh, the number of processes that were running at a certain point, the memory that was running. We put alarms in also in CheckMK that if the service is running, if it's active, if it's standby, in some cases you have fault tolerant and you have standby services, but also if it was stopped. And if it was stopped, we had rules that allow you to restart autom automatically, but obviously we would have an alert on CheckMK. So this is the first part, the, the top part of the graphic. As you can see, it's the uh, TIPCO is uh, Java-based, so you have the garbage collector. Whenever the memory gets a little bit higher, it dumps the, the memory and allows it to, to perform correctly. Uh, and in the bottom, you have the EMS for one type of queue. So as you can see, it had spikes. And what's happening is the consumer and producer are, are doing their jobs. But if there is a problem on the consumer side, for instance, and you are not able to collect the messages quickly, you get you stack messages in the queue, right? So in, the, in this case, you, it's pretty healthy in the way that is operating. But we were able to find out in one place that during the night, as I was saying, um, we had kind of a mountain graphic where something was happening. And we could not understand it. This was very helpful to give us insight that at some points, because of some conciliation processes that were running, um, you kind of had a stack of messages in the queue. So that this was very important to find out that problem and to help us bypass it. Uh, we here have some other monitors that we were doing, uh, trying to connect to FTP servers that our client connected to using another TIPCO product called Business Connect. Um, and basically, this is understanding if the FTP client was operational or not, trying to connect. But this is more uh, out of the box and didn't require that much imp implementation. So regarding the benefits achieved and lessons learned, um, I think talking about some issues that we have, one of them is in TIPCO, you, have, you can configure for max jobs on an instance. And the number of max jobs, the number of threads that it can run, uh, it's the number of services that can run on that, on that BW. And what happens sometimes, it's rare but happen, is if your threads start to deadlock and be f not frozen but on a place that it cannot move, imagine you can have like 20 active processes, but you cannot collect more because each time 
the processor is changing to take care of one of the threads, it's just deadlocked, so it will run during the 20 active processes, but nothing will happen. And for a monitoring system, it's not wrong because it, the, the processes are there. You don't have context of the application running behind. So these help us to create rules. If you had 20 active processes, the number of max jobs standing for a very large period of time, you'd get a warning to at least someone look at it and ensure that the processes were flowing correctly and they, they were not deadlocked. And this was very, very important because although this error was quite rare, it happened and we lose context and everything was stopped. You also get some um, um, stack at the queue side because you're not consuming more messages as, as well. Um, regarding the queue management insights, as I mentioned before, it was very important to understand that in this kind of, in this problem that we had, that during the night we had a high number of messages that would impact other systems. But when we arrived in the morning trying to take care of the system, everything was working fine and the messages have been consumed during the first hours of the morning. And we lose context of that because you, as I mentioned before, you would go to the tool that allow you to see the number of messages on the queue and everything looked fine. So it took some time and this implementation helped the client a lot to understand that some other issues on the platform, on the ecosystem were, were happening. Uh, so in that case, it was very important to, to, to us as supporters to be able to find out the project. So lessons learned for what we have implemented. I think the best part and what we really were happy to, to work with CheckMK in this case, in a tool that it's very flexible, there you can implement and create strategies to uh, work around your processes. In this case, it was an implementation, kind of a workaround that we've done to allow us to showcase and to dashboard some issues that we had and the flexibility that uh, CheckMK provides was very, very important to do so. Uh, and it showcases that you can use this kind of strategies not only to implement in one tool that didn't have like a plugin directly to do so, but you can implement strategies and implement uh, solutions that could help you showcase these kind of dashboards. Um, I think I'm a little bit ahead of the time. But uh, yeah, I appreciate your attention. Thank you so much for listening to what we have to share. Uh, it was a pleasure to, to be here and feel free to connect. If you have any questions, please feel free to talk about it. Thank you so much. So Pedro, is this approach also applicable to other um, middleware software? I mean, you did it for Tipco, but is the same principle also applicable for something else? Yes, and uh, one of the things that, looking back now, you could enhance it with other systems to help you even uh, on the monitoring side, like using Kafka, for instance, to collect the messages instead of using scripts to put on, on the, or taking care and refine the scripts. But yeah, you can implement in all monitoring, in all uh, middleware systems, because this is a, a way that you um, define afterwards, right? You just mentioned Kafka, and that's, I have actually two questions regarding Kafka. Okay. Um, like, are you also monitoring Kafka already today with that, or we have you something for not that? On, not on this client, but yeah, we have systems where we are monitoring Kafka. And does it work similar to what you did there, or is it different? Uh, it's different because you have plugins directly to, to do so, so it's a different approach. Here we didn't have really anything that allow you to collect directly from Tipco to CheckMK. So we had to come up with this strategy of using and leveraging these tools like Tipco Hawk and the TBMS admin, and then refine the, the Python scripts to do so. And is the Kafka plugin online available for everyone? or the, in, this, in this project, we are not using okay. Kafka. So. OK, but in the other? Yeah. Um, by the way, thanks to, uh, thanks to Ricardo if you're listening. Thanks for the yeah. MS Teams plugin. One example where we mainlined something from the community. 
Um, yeah. yeah. And uh, yeah, thank you again. Just mentioning Ricardo, he was the one that really drive uh, the partnership that we have with Czech MK. We are fortunate to be the only client in Portugal um, partner partner with Czech MK, and very happy to do so. Uh, we have one more question. Um, is it possible to um, calculate the difference between sender and consumer as well? Yes. Yeah. 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 Do you, you can do identify it? it. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. There was one question here. Um, okay, cool. Any other questions? Then, thank you very much. Thank you so much for having me.